Welcome to the Level Up with GNO Realty Podcast, your number one source for information on buying, selling, and investing in real estate in the greater New Orleans area. Now, here are your hosts, Braden Smith and Chuck Stahl. Uh, hey guys, welcome back to the Level Up Podcast with GNO Realty. I'm your host, Braden Smith, and my co host here, Chuck Stahl. We are back for episode number six. I can't believe we've done six episodes already. Seems to go by pretty quickly, and uh, I think we're getting getting the hang of this thing now. We, we took the two easiest topics first. We went with buying and selling. Now we got to go into like the minutia of everything. Right. But uh, we actually had a good one for this week. Your better half came up with this topic. Yeah, yeah. My uh, my wife had a good idea for the for this week's uh, or this month's episode. Uh, I told her I was kind of drawing a blank on, on what to cover this time, and she had a really good idea, and that was to talk about uh, what does and doesn't actually add value to a house. Um, we get that question often from sellers. Um, yep. Yeah, in the episode five, we talked about for sale by owners versus agent-assisted listings, and the statistics aren't even close. Uh, everything that was agent-assisted was far higher than for sale by owners. Even though for sale by owners did have a satisfaction rate, uh, maybe they didn't even realize how much money they were potentially leaving on the table, and and they had to work. Yeah. Not only did they sell faster, but they sold for a higher price with an agent. Yeah, and even ones that had started out as a for sale by owner and finished with an agent were actually sold at a higher price than those were that were just for sale by owners. So than what they thought they could originally get. Starting to see it a lot. I mean, uh, and, and one more thing, you know, not to completely – dive back into last week but uh we talked about the things the pitfalls and one being if you're not an attorney uh contract mitigation can be can be tough absolutely Uh, i mean honestly as a for sale by owner you're kind of opening yourself up to all kinds of liability um, because you're not experienced well typically you're not going to be experienced unless you're an attorney uh, or you're very familiar with contract law in, in some sort of way you're not going to be familiar with the contracts and all the paperwork that goes along with, with buying or selling a house. And so you're potentially opening yourself up to a lot of liability if, if something's not done correctly throughout the process. We're getting burned. Just getting burned, not understanding how something is written or read. Um, so we, we talked about those. We talked about the pitfalls. And uh, we're going to go back into our uh, what we do every episode and give it a little market update. All right, so for some of the current market stats here, we got uh, the sales price. Uh, the sales price keeps climbing, as it has been. Um, I don't know if that can continue forever, but for the time being, it, it keeps climbing here. Um, we looked at some of the differences between some of the local parishes, Orleans Parish, Jefferson Parish, St. Tammany Parish, with obviously Orleans Parish is the highest. And you can see the big difference between living in Orleans Parish versus St. Tammany. If you were looking to move somewhere or purchase, basically – what, what that location goes dollar value wise you were going to talk a little bit about the number of new listings here so yeah for june and the new listings we had uh we're up actually this is the one of the few categories where we're up now think about where we were june of last year right and we're only up 1.2 percent so it's still kind of low and it might have gone back around where you were talking about where we had that bottleneck and now we can't sustain inventory so even though we've got an increase remember last year june of 2020 was I mean, it wasn't that was about as low as we got, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm starting to see some some nationwide, like national articles for real estate talking about uh, things are starting to shift a little bit. It seems like here in the last week or so, starting to see a few news articles about it in different parts of the country where uh, we're starting to see a little bit of a, a slowing, a little bit of a softening with the market. Um, but in my opinion, I think a lot of that has to do with just buyer fatigue. Mm-hmm. You know, I. I, I personally got some buyer clients that I've been working with for the last couple of months and they're worn out. It'll give you a thousand yard stare. It really will. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's just, as we've mentioned before, it's tough out there for buyers right now and it'll wear you down because, you know, these current uh, clients of mine, we've looked at probably 25 or more houses and we've made five offers and we still haven't been able to to get one. And there were probably five strong offers too. Oh yeah. We went well over asking price in the last one and still didn't get it. Yeah. And that's, that's been how it's been. We've, we've kind of heard the horror stories. We've definitely talked about it in previous episodes. Uh, so new listings just for the New Orleans metro area overall, a slight tick up. 
hopefully that's a sign of uh, relief ahead. Uh, kick yeah. it back to you for homes for homes for sale. Yeah, it looks like with the number of homes for sale, um, you know that that's been steadily decreasing, uh, really for years and drastically here over the last year. It's taken the sharpest decline over the last year or so, and that that trend has been continuing. Um, but as we just mentioned, that that trend may start to reverse a little bit here soon. Hopefully, hopefully some the buyers can get a little bit of relief here. Um, otherwise, it's it's uh, it's just not going to be good. <laughs> well, it, it you know, hey, it, it, it's great when you have a listing and immediately you feel a ton of calls in a day. But you know that this isn't the market we want to be in all the time forever. You know, right. it's nice. It's nice to weather a market. It's good to be able to adapt. But we want a nice, sustainable. Uh, calm seas market, I guess you would say. It would it would be really nice if we could get back to a more balanced market, both for buyers and sellers. I mean, it's honestly it's been great for sellers lately, but um, it's just been a pretty rough for buyers, and we really need to get back to a more balanced market. This is not a normal market, and it's not really a sustainable market. No, then that's the that's a great word, sustainable, and it is not. So, looking at the Ju June median days on market, look at at Jefferson Parish down to 10 days, 10 days on market on average. That's the lowest I've ever seen for sure. I mean, think about that, less than two weeks. Yeah, barely I, over a week. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Um, it, in Orleans Parish, it is, it, it is the highest at 23, but still a far cry from nearly 40 at, at, in 2019. Um, go ahead and tell us about the months of supply. I mean, you said it before, I mean, it, it keeps going lower. Yeah, it keeps going lower, and, and uh, kind of an interesting point there is that the uh, the days on market are longer in Orleans Parish, but s we have more supply in Orleans Parish also. Uh, not real sure exactly what is the reason for that, but it seems like we have, uh, I mean, what the stats are saying, what the data looks like is that there's less people looking in Orleans than there is in, in Jefferson Parish and, and St. Tammany. Um, but, you know, that's kind of been the trend since this whole COVID pandemic started is that we were seeing people moving away from the city centers, uh, looking to get more space, looking to get more house, looking to get more for their money, and then the, the whole kind of situation we talked about in the past where uh, people are able to work remotely. So they're able to live a further out from the city if they don't have to commute, and that, that may be what we're seeing here in the data. And a couple of years ago in Orleans Parish, there was a big controversy with the tax assessments, and people were, were in, in groves going to protest their tax assessments. So... I don't know if that, you know, was a straw that broke a camel's back, so to speak, and people decided they had had enough and are going to other places. But something to keep in mind, if you have a property in Orleans Parish that you're looking to sell and sell quickly, it might not go as quickly as other things around you are going. Yeah, uh, I would say don't compare the, uh, the sales process of your house in Orleans Parish to another house that might be in Jefferson Parish or Even St. in Bucktown, Tammany. right across the, the yeah. way. Things are drastically different in Jefferson Parish. Like I said, 10 days on market versus 23. And then with the month of supply, we're talking just 1.6 months of supply in Jefferson and St. Tammany compared to 3.6 months of supply in Orleans. And that's a significant difference. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to list their house in St. Tammany or Jefferson <laughs> Parish? Please give us a call. Uh, percent of list price uh, in all four parishes has shown a very interesting trend. It all kind of stayed in the same shape as it trended at the same trajectory upwards and upwards and right now in the new orleans metro area we're at 99.4 percent um percent of list price uh st tammany parish is at 100. yeah right at 100 and jefferson parish is pushing 100 and then if we look at the price per foot here kind of the opposite of what we were saying with the days on market and the months of supply orleans parish commands the highest price per foot um, location, as, location, location, right? As it usually usually does and always has. Um, Jefferson Parish is right behind that, and then St. Tammany behind that. Uh, looking like the uh, the median price per foot in Orleans Parish is up over 200 a foot, 203 a foot, which is which is high, the highest it has been uh, any time recently. And then Jefferson Parish, we're at about 142, but we know some parts of Jefferson Parish are over 200 a foot as well, like the, the Bucktown area. Mm -hmm. Uh, anywhere closer to the parish line, basically, uh, or what we would call below causeway. Mm -hmm. Renovated homes have been getting over 200 a foot in that area. And then St. Tammany at 132 for the median price, but again, some parts get much higher than that as well. Jefferson Parish has that lovely uh, 
jewel in their cap of having old Metairie in there to drive those price per square foot up a little bit. Yeah, that's true, too. They, uh, they get way up over 200 a foot in some <laughs> parts of old Metairie. So talking about shows per listing, and this is an interesting statistic because you can interpret this in a few ways. You know, if something's not getting a lot of shows per listing, is it not getting enough attention, or is it just showing a few times getting an offer and getting through? But we figure they track it, we might as well bring it up, especially with people wanting to buy or sell their home. This is the traffic that you can expect through your house. In Jefferson Parish, 7.6 shows per listing. Uh, in Orleans Parish, it's the lower end at 4.3, and in Jefferson, it is 6.3 shows per listing. But I can tell you, if it's a renovated house in Jefferson Parish, especially anywhere in Metairie or Kenner, they're flying off the show. Oh, yeah. Immediately. Uh, I think the only ones that are taking any time or, or getting more showings are the ones that need some work or, the, or just maybe need some updating. And I mean, we're talking, you know, we say a parish and you don't think it's that big, but a, a parish covers a large area. And yeah. there's a lot that, it, you know, a lot of different, different neighborhoods that it entails that we average out here. Absolutely. In Orleans Parish, there's 73 official named neighborhoods. 73. In Orleans Parish. And then, you know, Jefferson Parish has a very wide range of neighborhoods and types of properties. I mean, because you've got the East Bank, then mm -hmm. you've got the West Bank. And if I'm not mistaken, Jefferson Parish goes all the way down to Grand Isle, doesn't it? Uh, actually, that's Plaquemines. I want to. Uh, does Jefferson go? To, yeah, Jefferson does go down to Grand Isle. It does. I think so. Yeah, because yeah, Plaquemines is on the eastern side of that. So, yeah. Sure does. Yeah, so just in Jefferson Parish alone, you've got all kinds of different neighborhoods, you know, between Metairie, Kenner, Harahan, River Ridge, um, Old Jefferson. That's just on the East Bank. And then on the West Bank, you've got a bunch of different neighborhoods over there, too. Let's dig into this week's topic, which is uh, projects that, that add value to your home. And I was, I was trying to think of how we could present this. You know, we could sit there and, and do lists. And there's a lot of other blog articles out there that have kind of already done it. Uh, I kind of want to make a game out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a couple of these projects and you can play at home if you're viewing or listening and see if you can get these right, see how you score. Uh, I'm going to name a project and you're going to tell me if it improves the value of your home. Improves is the big word here, meaning like As it in adds in to increases, it. Increases, so. yeah. Not sustains, increases. Right. So I'm going to start with a functioning HVAC system. Well, that's one of those things where if you think about it, any buyer out there in the market is going to expect to have the heat and air conditioner work. That's kind of what you expect. It goes along with any house. Especially geographically here. Yeah, you, you better have an AC that works here. Yeah. I mean, that's something that it's not going to increase the value, but it's going to, I guess, as you said, sustain the value because that's something that buyers expect to be in good working order. It's one of those things where if you have it, what you could be going up against. I, I was working with a buyer that a couple of the properties he looked at, some of them had HVACs and some of them did not. And it basically became kind of like a luxury item to that particular person. It goes buyer by buyer. But does it increase the value at the end of the day? No, it does not. Uh, that one is correct. It can definitely incre increase the appeal. Of, oh, <laughs> certainly, yeah. <laughs> Am I going to sleep here ever? Yeah, right. I'm going to need a little bit of air conditioning. And I crank mine up hot, but I need one in there. Yeah. Uh, what about a garage door replacement? The answer to this one's actually a yes. Uh, according to the 2021 cost versus value report available at costversusvalue.com, in New Orleans, a garage door replacement resells at about 97% of the job cost. Yeah, and that's really one of the highest recoup values you can do. So put in yep. a new door, the four panel on some new tracks. You can even use the old system, the old automatic system, but even just replacing that front aesthetic, in, uh, you recoup 97% of that cost. Yeah, that's actually pretty amazing, 97% of that. I, that, that I would know, and it's funny, how, how does one track something like that? Because I've never broken down with a client down to the garage door what we thought we were paying. Yeah, I'm not real sure how they came up with that, but that's what they do. That's their thing is to compare cost versus value. That's why they've got that website. So right. costversusvalue.com, check their out for that information. Um, let's talk about siding replacement. Does siding replacement increase value in your home? This one is another yes. Again, according to the 2021 cost versus value report available at costversusvalue.com, in New Orleans, vinyl siding recoups at a rate of about 68.2%, and the fiber cement siding recoups at a rate of 
Uh, most people call that Hardy Board, but Hardy's actually a brand name. It's uh, James Hardy is the brand, so it's called Hardy Board, but there are other brands out there. That's just the brand name that everybody knows. It's like the like you said, like Kleenex. Or, or, uh, or some people say, you know, they give me a, a, a Coke, but they, they don't necessarily mean a Coca Cola. They might need a Pepsi or something else, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm from New Orleans. That's exactly what I would <laughs> right. kind of Coke, uh, Coke Zero, yeah. <laughs> um, what about a roof that does not leak? Yeah, a lot of times we'll hear a seller say, well, you know, I just spent X amount of money putting a new roof on the house. I want to uh, up the price by that same amount. Maybe they spent 15 grand on a new roof, so they want to add 15 grand to their sales price. But that's, again, it's kind of like the HVAC system. It, that's not really how that works. Uh, any buyer is going to expect to have a roof that doesn't leak and uh, to be in good working order, and that doesn't need to be replaced in the next couple of months. Um, so that, that's not going to increase your value, but again, it will increase the appeal. And this is a great time to get to say this because you're not saying it to anybody specifically. Even though you had to take on a great expense to repair something in your home, it's not going to drive up the price. It's, and I get that people want to and are looking to recoup expenses. But you've got to look at it um, objectively and understand that you didn't increase anything even though it hit you hard in the pocketbook and and we sympathize with that yeah roofs are not cheap they're not cheap you know and and it's all you got to pay all at once it's you know it's right. tough to to get that roof on layaway but uh any anyway uh it's not going to increase the value of your home what about a deck addition uh that's a, another one that actually will increase the value. It's kind of a value add, I think. And again, according to that 2021 cost versus value report available at costvsvalue.com, in New Orleans, a wooden deck addition has a 68.5% cost recoup rate. Um, so that, that definitely, that's a pretty solid number there. It's, it's well over 50%. And, and, and deck additions, especially in, in New Orleans, because people can use that outdoor space. They said in areas where you do get times of year where, hey, in the Northeast, you might get three months a year you could use that deck. You even use it. Right. Um, but here we could use it year round. You might put some fans out there. You may have a mosquito system space of some kind. Space winter. heaters in the winter, fire pit or something. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, that deck addition, correct, will increase the value of your home. Uh, here is one that that people aren't quite sure about: major upscale kitchen remodel. And let me let me be specific here: major upscale kitchen remodel, not just a few fixtures here and there. We're talking about everything to the tens, completely renovating your all kitchen. All new, basically. You rip it all out and replace it all. Rip it all out, replace it all. New cabinets. Um, uh, all the higher end uh, ceramic glass tile backsplash water filtration system everything we're talking about major kitchen because people say hey kitchens bathrooms closets sell houses right so let me get this area as great as it can be what is a what can I expect to recruit on a major upscale kitchen remodel well again if we refer according refer back to that same report according to the 2021 cost versus value report available at costversvalue.com in New Orleans uh, we a major kitchen remodel only sees a 44.8% recoup in resale. Um, so that's that's less than 50%. Um, now, you know, when it comes to uh, kitchen remodels like that, it's very easy to overdo it. Oh, yeah. Well, it gets exciting. Yeah. And I've never sold kitchen appliances or kitchen systems, but I could see where it would be fun because you can get real worked up about it. I'm the one that spends the time in the kitchen in, in, in our house. I'm, I'm the chef. Um, but – and – I could see where wanting a lot of area to work around with, some bright colors make it a happier place, uh, everything that's in style right now. But like you're saying, you can really go overboard with it, and that's fine. But know that it's a luxury you're enjoying as opposed to an investment in your home. Right. And the thing about kitchen remodels is that there's so many choices in, in things like countertops, and there's so much variation in price. You know, even say just between granite, if you want, there's a low end granite, there's a mid range granite, and there's a high end granite, and the price variance is huge between those. It's all still granite, but the price range can vary greatly. And it's the same thing with appliances. You know, you can go from, uh, a, a, say, a, a good, nice stainless steel appliance package that you might be able to get for 3500 four grand for the whole package, or then you can go all the way up to high end stuff where it's $10,000 for a refrigerator. You know, so 
what you really want to do when you're doing a kitchen remodel, um, just to, to make a point about this here to all the listeners out there, is you really need to look at the comparable sales in your neighborhood or have your realtor do so for you. Look through the pictures, look at other updated homes in the area, and see what they put in their kitchens and try to go along that same range. That way you know you're not overdoing it, you're not underdoing it. You want to kind of match the neighborhood. Know what you're up against. Don't, be, don't let it be a detriment. Yeah. Uh, it's just like the kind of the thing about where if you were going to build a house in the neighborhood, you never want to be the biggest, most expensive house in the neighborhood because you're never going to get your money back out of that house. You want If you're going to build a new house in a particular neighborhood, it's best to build something that matches the neighborhood. Um, now, we're seeing a lot of neighborhoods right now, though, kind of on the flip side of that. We're seeing a lot of neighborhoods, especially in Metairie right now, in parts of Metairie, where they're tearing down the old smaller houses and building big, giant, massive houses. And uh, because that trend is happening so much, and I think that's going to continue, then you're probably going to be okay you know, when you go to sell that house because there's so many people doing it. But if you were the only one, you're going to be in a bad spot. Well, you saw that in Lakeview after the storm because mm-hmm. of all the, the destruction that was done. You had to rebuild new things. And, and property values on people who got in there, you know, buying their grandparents' lot or or their parents' lot or making an investment in a less expensive lot just after Katrina and hoping it would come back. Yeah. saw dividends because people started building these big you know we see multi or not multi but million dollar listings in lakeview all the time now right right and you know that we have a very unique real estate market here also as compared to a lot of other areas of the country because we're locked in by water we have the lake to the north and the river to the south so there's only so much this land is in what between. we got <laughs> so really if you want to build you're going to buy something and tear it down most likely there's not a whole lot of vacant lots out there there are some but they're few and far between, so more times than not, you're doing what we call infill new construction, and typically you're going to tear something down to make that work. Yeah, the only place you're seeing new things develop in is up in St. Tammany. Yeah, up on the North Shore, they got new subdivisions popping up left and right because they've got the available space to do it. Um, and some of those subdivisions are huge, you know, as much as 12, 1,500 homes in a, in a particular subdivision. Well, I think we've got a... Uh, a listener that has sent in a message, a question for us here. You, you want to read the question out there? It work. It works with this week too. So we, we're gonna we're gonna add it into the game. We'll just put it in at the end here. It is. Uh, this comes from Ashley in Kenner, and Ashley writes, "How much value would a pool add to my home?" Yeah, that's a that's a question we get often. And one thing, it's a it's a topic that most people aren't familiar with and they're not aware of. Um, number one, pools are extremely expensive, and most people don't realize how expensive they are. And then number two, most people don't realize that you're not going to get much of your money back when you go to sell it on a pool. Um, so kind of the, the, it's not really a cut and dry answer here. The short answer is yes, but you need to know what you're getting into. Uh, according to Home Advisor, building a pool costs between about 16000 on up to 44000 on average. Uh, but, but a true in-ground pool is going to range from... Uh, somewhere around 35,000 up to 65,000 or more uh, and basically the way the pricing in our area typically runs on average for a full-size pool now this is not an Olympic size pool just a full-size pool a normal size pool about 60 grand mm-hmm. um, and but a lot of people do what we call a cocktail pool in our area especially where they're building new construction because as you've seen with new construction they're building them to where they pretty much consume most of the lot Mm -hmm. so there's not really a whole lot of room or space left for a yard much less a pool Um, so they put in what we call a cocktail pool which is basically kind of a half size pool where it's not big enough to swim laps in but you're going to be able to get in there cool off have a cocktail hence the name cocktail pool it's big enough for the kids to get in there and play around small socializing you know yeah and those are run about half as much as a, a normal pool so they start at about 30 where a normal pool starts at about 60 but a full size pool can easily get up to 100 also now, are we still seeing um, pool service companies or pool construction companies that are still backed up since the storm? Yeah, or yeah. Uh, since the virus, I should say, not the storm. Yeah, I know a, a couple people in the, the pool business in one shape, form, or fashion, and uh, they're all slammed. Um, apparently, there's still a lot of people putting pools in, but you know, I think it goes along with the whole COVID pandemic situation where a lot of people were doing renovations to their home, additions to their home, uh, you know, maybe creating a home office creating a space to do homeschooling when the schools are closed. Um, Just the fact that people are home more and the whole family being home at one time all the time made a lot of people realize 
we need more space here. We need more stuff here. It changed us. It changed everybody. Yeah, and, and pools are one of those things that people decided, you know, we'd like to have a pool. Let's go ahead and put one in. But just know if you're putting a pool in, you're doing it for your personal enjoyment, basically. You're not going to get your money back out of it. Um, the, the national statistics typically show you're going to get maybe 10 to 15K back out of that $60,000 expense or more, 60000 or more. So uh, in our area, it's typically maybe 10 or 15K you're going to get back out of that. So just know that you're, you're going to be losing money on it, but you're going to get some great enjoyment out of it. And if you've got children, they're going to they're gonna love it, you know, and you'll be able to have pool parties and have people over. And so they're, they're Oh, nice you're things. having the parties. People right. are coming to your house. You don't know it yet. Yeah, you're host. It's like having a truck. You're helping people move oh, if you're yeah. having a pool. Yeah, it's definitely a nice thing to have, but it is, uh, I guess, a luxury item that you're not going to be able to recoup all your cost on. The only time that we could say it would be a detriment not to have one is if you were in, like, a higher-end neighborhood and say – most of the other homes that you were comparable with had a pool and you yeah. were the home that didn't like we were talking about earlier with anything the kitchen or yeah, match in the neighborhood try not to be the odd duck so to speak exactly which is hard in a city like this because it's where a lot of us odd ducks gravitate together so but um as far as real estate goes try to keep it try to stay in the pack there yeah it's just like uh you know, I do with my, my other company, which I have, happen to have that shirt on today. The, Great the, branding. The flipping company, uh, where I do flips and new construction, things like that. Anytime I'm doing a, a renovation project or, or we're building a home in a new neighborhood, we're going to match the neighborhood, not only aesthetically as far as the, the way it looks on the exterior. Um, I'm not Now, we see this in parts of New Orleans where sometimes you see a house built, say, in uptown somewhere, and it just sticks out like a sore thumb. It, it just looks like it doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't even know how some of those things get approved as far as Zion the city. can't get a movie theater in his house. We're trying to keep this guy around right. here. We've got to talk to the historic <laughs> society. Let the man have his movie theater. Yeah, I've even seen some properties in historic neighborhoods where the uh, HDLC, the Historic District's Landmark Commission, has total control. You have to submit all your plans to them. They dictate everything on the exterior of that house. And I've even seen some some properties get built or renovated in those historic neighborhoods where they completely don't fit, and I don't know how that happens, but somehow it does. Um, and, and like I said, some same thing with some parts of, of the city, uptown. There's Every now and then there's a house that just sticks out like a sore thumb. I don't do that. I hate that. I think it's... Uh, just the wrong thing to do, you know, especially in a city that's 300 plus years old. It, the right thing to do is to match the neighborhood. It, you make it look like it belongs. I, I understand that. And look, if you want to, you know, build your dream house or something like that, um, there's a lot of land all, you know, in other places on other than, shore. yeah, on the North Shore <laughs> that you could build that compound. Um, and you probably prefer because you won't be dealing with the historical society or the, uh, the, the Water Oak folks. And Yeah, they've even got a... Uh, at least one that I know of, if not two or three shipping container homes in parts of uptown New Orleans, which how or why they approve those uptown, I don't know. Different strokes for different <laughs> folks, I suppose. I mean, I'm not against the shipping container homes, but, you know, in, in uptown New Orleans, those definitely stick out like a sore thumb. Well, that's that's the most hardcore part of town as far as, like, historical societies go, so to speak. I mean, it's kind of something they're proud you know it's a it's a pride thing about yeah. the area and we have a lot of historic neighborhoods in new orleans quite a few of them um and we have the expanded historic districts also but in the expanded historic districts the hdlc has partial control in the full historic districts they have full control so in the partial control areas basically all they dictate is is whether you can or can't tear it down mm -hmm. um they don't have any say so as far as what you do kind of to the exterior in those full control areas you have to make the house historically accurate. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to do you're going to use materials that are like replica materials, uh, such as wooden windows. They're going to make you go back with with wooden windows, working wooden windows, which are cost three to four times as much as your typical vinyl windows that we use on on most properties. Um, so that's also a good point for the listeners out there to know if you're ever buying a house in in a full historic district, uh, any work you do on that house is going to be much more expensive than in another area. I don't think so. So I guess that's about it for today. Um, if anyone has any questions, be sure to, uh, to send them our way. As we say every episode, you can email us. My email is braden at genorealty.com. And mine is chuck at genorealty.com. 
that's the uh, probably the easiest way to uh, get in touch with us. We have, we have a Facebook page for the podcast also. You can message us on the page there, um, and then you can find the uh, the podcast on wherever you you like to consume your your podcast and all the major podcast channels. Um, on Anchor.fm, it's on uh, iTunes. Anywhere you get podcasts in your audio form, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Spotify, and then, of course, we're on YouTube, and and smash down that subscribe button. Leave us only good reviews, please. Uh, That's the only (laughs) ones we are accepting at this time. And um, make sure you hit subscribe at Level Up with GNO Realty on Facebook. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Level up.